Welcome everyone and thank you for joining Painting with Picasso's Grapevine. My name is Leanna Hahn and I will be host and teacher for today. Today we're going to work on this gorgeous spring painting of a tulip. So nice and loose, nice colors, really easy, nice big fluid moment, uh, movement rather, and we're going to do some really fun splatter painting which everybody likes. So for today we're going to go ahead and start out with our check of what we'll be using. I like to use the nice and large number 12 Filbert. That's really great for doing that a lot of large spreading of paint. And then today I've got kind of a medium, like a number six Filbert. As well, uh, we always start with our cup of water and our dab rags. And for our colors today, we're gonna be working with black, white. We have some green oxide, just a little tint of cad yellow. We've got some magenta and then we've got some purple as well as we're going to use this really cool metallic silver to kind of do a little bit of this glistening just to give it a little bit of a nice highlight. So before we start with every painting we always kind of look at it and kind of decide placement. So this painting here is really kind of looking at the side of the tulip. We've got a nice angled. Um, we're going to start with kind of putting in uh, this particular background is just white. We don't have any white paint on the canvas so we're just going to let the raw canvas be our background. Again, this painting is really taking up the majority of the, of the canvas. So with that, we'll go ahead and start with our blank canvas. We'll start with our number 12 filbert and go ahead and get that wet. So we're going to do some roundabout drawing really with our, with our paintbrush. So we'll get it moist, get a little bit of that that nice magenta on here, and we're going to decide where is the top of our flower. So we've got a couple of the petals there, we're going to decide the top of the flower, and let's get the overall shape of the flower on there. Just kind of running this very swoopy feel, not really getting a lot of paint on the canvas, just kind of doing this to get a, a drawing, if you will. So we're deciding where we're gonna place those petals, kind of bringing them in. And this is our top of our petal, but we're gonna say, where's our big petal? <clears throat> if you recall, we had a very large petal that really took up the majority of this canvas. So we're gonna to decide to place that there. If we need to redraw, kind of make this make more sense, close lines, you can do that. We're doing some nice light drawing, so. Again, just kind of getting this on here, kind of close it up at the edges. We have to make it look kind of proportionately so it makes sense. So, and don't forget, take a step back. I always tell people, of course, I'm drawing here from the side. You need to take a step, look at your canvas, make sure the proportions and the placement looks good. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Now, I use what is called a I kind of describe it as the flashlight effect. So if I had a flashlight and I was shining it on my canvas, where would the light fall and where would the shadows fall? So if I choose it to be right here, I'm gonna make sure that my depth, my shadows and my darkness is gonna be opposite of where that light falls. So let's go ahead and get some of this color now onto the canvas. And you're gonna notice but you're working with this magenta and you're working with the, the purple, it's gonna be very iridescent, very opaque. So you're gonna to want to jump between the white. And I know it's very counterintuitive. You think that, oh, if I add white, it's gonna make it darker. The reality is, is it'll make it more solid. So it actually covers the canvas. And just kind of move with your strokes. Keep your strokes going in the same direction as the pedal. You, do, of course, don't want to move downward here. We're going to get some coverage on here. And then we're going to go in and add some nice depth. So let's just go ahead and get this covered. Again, if you're finding it to be iridescent, add some white. Once you add the white, you can then go on top of it with that magenta, and then you can get a deeper feel. All right. So we've got this movement going here. Now I'm going on top of it with the magenta. Just kind of keeping those strokes going in the same direction. And I'm gonna jump on my palette here. I'm gonna start mixing a little bit of the purple with the magenta. And I'm gonna bring that in closer to that middle petal. And again, this is where 
we're kind of creating some of that depth. We're going to get the first layer on. It's something that you're going to find too with acrylics. Acrylics, you really get that depth in layering. So our first layer will only achieve a certain level of paint. Then you'll need to let it dry slightly and come in with your second layer. So again, I'm adding a lot of that white. And you'll notice too, I'm putting the white on top here and you have the darkness there. That's to show you that there is a difference. You want to be able to show the distinct difference between the two petals. So bringing that down. Kind of jumping back over. We're going to add some more of that magenta. Really keep it moving. Again, you want to keep your strokes moving in the same direction as your petal. So making these nice broad strokes. and continuing going up and down, right with the same direction of the petal. We can go ahead and grab some of that purple, adding it right on top. And again, this flower can be as dark as you like it, it can be as light as you like it. It's a tulip, there's a wide variety of color schemes and a tulip. We've got some gorgeous variegated ones, which would be a really cool painting. This is just a nice color combination for the spring and summer, really. And you'll notice right now I'm going back and forth with my strokes. I'm not too concerned about it. Right now I'm just trying to get coverage, moving quickly. As you get to the center, you'll notice here I'm going concaved on both sides and in the center it kind of becomes a little bit lighter. That's on purpose because I want to show that that petal is actually a rounded effect. This being one side of it, this being the bottom side of it. And so it's a perfect time to go ahead and bring in some of that beautiful purple. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab just a hair, just a dot of that black and create a little bit of a, a deeper highlight. And truly, this is going to be a combination where you'll know when to stop when you like the look. So you can't really mess it up. You're going to just achieve a beautiful painting. And when you're happy with the combination, that's when you stop. We'll continue on with our petals on this side. Now I'm just using a lot of the magenta right now just to get that coverage in there, grabbing a little bit of the white again, helping it with that opaque. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the purple here because I see that this petal is going down behind the first petal. So I want to show some depth. I want to show some darkness and some shadows to show that there is a difference. And it will kind of come on top to redefine the difference. Kind of go on this side, finish up with your strokes. And if you mess up anything on your first petal here, don't worry about it. It's wet right now. This is a great time to make any corrections. All right, and we'll come back in with some more purple really define the depth. Now, you'll notice my strokes are quick. And this is great right now because all this paint is still nice and wet. You do have to move quick if you want to have that nice blended feel. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness here just to define the difference. Kind of going back on top with some white and a little bit of magenta. All right. So I'm liking the feel of this. I'm going to move on to my last petal. Same technique. We're going to continue with that nice darkness on the right side. Just getting some nice coverage. Moving in, keeping our strokes going in the same motion. 
and same direction. Adding white when we feel like we're not getting enough color coverage. And then making sure right here, right next to that petal, we're gonna come in with our magenta. We're gonna place that magenta there and then we're gonna come in with some, with some white so we can show the difference between the petals. Now on our last stroke, we are gonna move in with some of our silver to kind of define that. So don't worry if you're not getting that definition. We can achieve that with the silver. And just kind of making sure we get around this painting while it's still nice and wet. All right, and then step back, take a look. All right, do I have my highlights where I want them to be? Make any corrections where I want to now, where it's still nice and wet. Do I have my low lights where I want them to be? Really kind of coming in. You can start, I've been using my strokes going up and from the top moving down. This would be a great time to kind of shift over because when you put that paint on for the first time, you're gonna get the darkest when you're first placing it on your, on your canvas. So this being the bottom side of the flower, that's where you wanna now, if we're, if we're moving towards a final look, we wanna start from the bottom and move up because you'll notice as my brush moves up the canvas, it also moves off the canvas. So we're getting our largest comparison right there at the bottom. So at first we're just starting out for coverage. Now we're kind of looking for that, that finalized look. All right, so that's looking good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move into my medium brush. Go ahead and get that moist. And we're gonna go ahead and put some bottom portion where the greenery goes. And actually I think I need a little bit of coverage right here at the bottom. Just kind of get this moving down. Now normally you would give your painting an opportunity to dry before you move on to this portion. But I think just for, just for placement, we'll kind of go ahead and show you where to put that greenery. So we're gonna start with a very swoopy feel, starting from the center, kind of moving up. We want it to be very light when it hits that middle section. So that's where we're starting from the bottom, moving up. Go ahead, get some coverage on it. If we need to even darken it up a bit, you can grab a little bit of the black, add a little bit of depth. And just fill that in because the last thing you're gonna wanna do is go back on top of that with that little bit of yellow and just give it a, just kind of a highlight. to show some differential, some nice movement. Now, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead, wash off that medium brush. We're gonna grab some of that, that black and we're gonna move that black in with the purple and really create some nice depth here. I need to jump back and forth between some of the magenta, that's fine. Because I really like the contrast kind of coming up from the bottom here. And again, this is perfect when it's nice and wet. That's the point where you're gonna get the best streak movement on your canvas. So let's kind of move this up a little further. Really defining where those petals start and where they end. We're gonna move this one down here. Again, I am placing that dark shadow right next to the petal. If you're finding it's getting too black, go ahead, jump back into your purple, mix the two together. And then carry it right around the edge here, right away up, all the way up to the top. as well as kind of come down here in the center. 
and just define where does that petal start and where does it end. If your paint is starting to dry up here, grab a little water. That'll help you with a nice medium, get them blended. Try and keep your strokes constantly moving so you don't have that stop and start inside the painting. All right. So we're coming to the point where we might be ready for a little bit of splatter paint. Now, everybody loves splatter paint. Um, it's something where you can kind of, you know, just kind of let loose and have fun. However, you don't want to let too loose because splattering can get a little messy. So what we're going to do is go ahead and finish up any more strokes you want on the canvas. Get that nice depth kind of defined. All right. And then don't forget, take a step back. Take a look at it. Now in our original, we've had a little bit of uh, just movement on the outside. So go ahead, grab some of the magenta, or if you want that, that beautiful purple. And we're just kind of creating some strokes here, just some activity. Just so you're not looking at a black or blank canvas on the back. There you go. And then the last step is that splatter paint. Now, to achieve that splatter paint, I'm going to start with a very large brush. And you're going to choose a color. So I'm going to choose kind of a combination of this white and purple or white and uh, magenta, rather. And I'm just putting in a lot of water here. The key is a lot of water. So making sure it's very liquid. Now, there's a couple ways to splatter paint. I've seen people go like this and flick it. You've got people in the back of you, and you've got people in front of you that might be wearing a little bit of paint. So the best way that I have found to really kind of control the splatter is to really take your painting and put it on a table. And then with that, you kind of do a controlled splatter. So you're really not getting it all over. You're getting that nice splatter feel, but without creating such a mess, you gotta clean the walls afterwards. So when is enough enough? It's, it's enough when you like the look of it. So we'll go ahead, get that on. Now, if you've got too much water on your paint, obviously you're gonna wanna let it dry before you sit it back up. So hopefully you have gained some really nice suggestions, some tips, We've taken some of the scary out of painting. If you would like to learn how to paint this painting or any other paintings at Picasso's Grapevine, just give us an in, send us an email to info at Picasso's Grapevine. Thank you for joining us.